Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the VPN service built into Mac OS Server. Now, VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And what VPN does is allows you to uh, tunnel back into your home network connection and allow your device to appear as if it is on your local network. It also encrypts all of the transactions going back and forth. So VPN is very useful for situations where you may be on an unsecured network, such as in a coffee shop or something like that. And this will then add security because it'll secure the connections back and forth and encrypt them so that people can't uh, you know, attempt to steal uh, the data going back and forth in between, like a man in the middle attack and that sort of thing. So uh, it does uh, add security. Uh, it also allows you, for those of you that uh, maybe are using a dot private or you don't want to have any ports open on your router except for VPN, it allows you to access your server through a VPN service like this so that it just increases your security. So it gives you a few options there. Now, a couple of things to keep in mind uh, with VPN. Uh, one important one is that just because you're using VPN does not mean that the Bonjour services will be available on your remote device. Uh, for instance, a lot of times what happens is people think that if, uh, let me put Finder here, that if they use a VPN that they'll their device will show up over here. It'll say server over here and they'll have this uh, connect and everything will show in their Finder sidebar. Uh, actually, VPN does not work with Bonjour services. So you will not see that information in here. You'll just have a connection uh, that, that I'll show you how to set up and then you'll still have to mount your uh, file shares and things like that like I showed you in the file sharing screencast that I did. So again, Bonjour does not work, so I just wanted to let people know that up front because a lot of times they're wondering, hey, I VPNed in and now I'm not seeing anything over here, and that's why that's the case. You won't, you won't see that at all. So I just want to make sure you, you keep that in mind uh, so that you know that. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that you have to have a .private or a .com, .net, that sort of thing, in order to use VPN. If you only have a .local server, you won't be able to use VPN. You'll have to change your host name over to a .private as well as your DNS uh, to a .private name or buy a registered domain name in order for VPN to work. So those are a couple of things to keep in mind if you're considering using the service. So let's go ahead and talk about how to set everything up. Uh, in this case, I've turned the service on already, so it says that my uh, the status is, is that it's reachable over the Internet at my host name right here. Uh, now, I've got this permissions area like we have on all of the services. And so if I edit permissions, again, I can allow connections from all users or only some users. So if I just want to limit it to some users that I have over here, I can choose those users and have it limited. Uh, and I can say when connecting from all networks, private networks are only some networks. And so I could even specify, uh, for instance, if I'm using it in business and I only want it to be from one building to the other, I could limit it to those two networks and then nobody can use VPN outside of that. So I do have some of those options to limit the access. I'm just going to leave it at the default right now. Uh, right here is where my VPN host name is, and so that's where I would put in my .com name uh, or even my .private name. You just put that information in there, and if everything's set up right, you'll get the green dot that says everything's ready to go. Uh, if you are using a .private address, uh, I would change this host name to be your public IP address so that that's put in there because you will be accessing your VPN remotely through your public IP not through your .private address because that address is not registered anywhere on the internet. Uh, it's something that you've just made up for your purposes. And so you'll have to use your public IP address to get in. Okay, And so I'd put that in there because that's going to come in, uh, become very important when we're talking about the configuration profile down here. Now I also have the shared secret, which is an added layer of security. And so you can put in whatever you want here. This is something you'll put in once, and then it'll be a part of your configuration profile. And so you want it to be something that's you know secure, uh, maybe long, that kind of thing. And, uh, and what that is is the server will then check against not only your username and password, but also against the shared secret to make sure that it has the right server and that you're not being spoofed or that somebody's trying to hack into your system. So again, just another layer of security there. And you can click this show button and it'll show you what you have in there for the shared secret. Now here is where we have the client addresses. And one of the things I want you to notice is that everything now is L2TP, which is Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol. That's what that stands for. We used to have in previous versions of server uh, PPTP, uh, which was an older protocol. 
And so that has been deprecated now so that that's no longer available. So we're only using the new standard of L2TP. So that's gone. In the old version, there was a drop down up here that allowed you to select which one you wanted to use. So if you need to use PPTP, then you're kind of out of luck uh, in Mac OS Server. You may have to downgrade to the El Capitan version in order to get that working. But just wanted to let you know that that's there and has been removed. Now I can edit the client addresses here. And what I want to do is I can assign as many addresses as I want, depending on how many people I think are hitting the network. Uh, I've just left this at the default. 31 is probably way too high. I could lower that down to the few devices that I think are going to hit the internet and maybe a few more just to be safe. Uh, but what you want to do is make sure that this starting number here is outside the starting number range that you have on your router. So if your router ends at, let's say, 194, uh, which a lot of them do, and then maybe just uh, scale up, uh, you know, 6, 10, something like that, and start from there and just make this last number a higher number. So this, if you can see, if I hover over this, you can see my range is from 200 to 230 uh, because I've got, you know, 31 assigned addresses there. So, uh, and that includes the 200. So anyway, um, that's how that works. You just want to make sure that's outside your IP range. So let me just cancel here. Now down here we have DNS uh, settings. And so let's go ahead and edit those for a minute. And so what this will do is give you DNS uh, servers to connect clients to. And so what you want, what will happen is you want to have your server's address here, so the static IP that you created for your server. You'll notice mine's changed a bit because I'm experimenting with the Eero um, Wi-Fi system here uh, to see how that works. And so their default was in the 192 range. Uh, previous screencasts I've done a 10.0.1.3 and that's what would show here. So sorry for the confusion there. I'm just kind of experimenting with it. Um, but that's why that number is there. And then these two are open DNS addresses that I put in there because I want my clients uh, to, be going, to be going through open DNS for all of their external addressing. Okay, so that's why that's there. Now I can also provide search domains uh, to connected clients if I wanted to, you know, if I hit the plus here, I can put in a domain name, um, whatever that would be uh, for search domains. Uh, a lot of times your local IP will have their own search domain that may show up here by itself. Uh, in my case, I don't have one that I've assigned, so that's just blank. So I'm going to cancel that and leave that alone. Now down here I've got routes, and so what I can do with this is if I've got a situation where I've got multiple subnets uh, that I'm working with, maybe I'm in a business or something, and I've got different routers with different subnets and IP addresses, I can put in different IP addresses and subnet masks and network type in here. You know, if I just hit this, you can see it's a be a private or a public network, and I can add that in there as additional routes to be provided to uh, uh, VPN clients. Again, if you want them to be able to travel across those different buildings, let's say, that might have different subnets and IP uh, addresses, you can do that in here as well. So I'm just going to cancel that because I don't have that situation. And then finally down here, we've got the configuration profile that I can save. And what this does is I could save this uh, and then email it to my clients. And all they need to do is double click on the configuration. It will automatically set up VPN for them on their remote device. So uh, like I said, it's a really nice feature. There are some other ways to set it up manually as well. Uh, but this is one of the fastest ways to make sure that your clients or whoever you're working with uh, that you want to have VPN can just have a one uh, double click easy setup uh, with everything already plugged in so you don't have to give them the shared secret and all of that uh, and then they can all they got to do is put their username and password in and they're good to go so I'll just cancel that because I'm going to leave that alone Okay, now one more thing you want to do before we go ahead and test the VPN service is you want to make sure that you've got all of the ports open on your router. And so on the screen here, I'm going to put the ports that you can open. If you've got an Apple router, it will automatically ask you if you want the ports opened when you turn on the service, which is great. That is one of the advantage of having an Apple router is that it integrates well with server. And so that will all be taken care of. But I just want to make sure we have the proper ports open or otherwise VPN will not work. So make sure you're opening those ports on your router. So now that we've got everything set up and ready to go, what I'm going to do is do a screen share to a remote device here and show you what it looks like to connect to VPN on a Mac. Okay, so here we are over on a screen share of my Mac. And so I'm here in System Preferences. And so you want to come down to Network. And they'll take us into the network area here. And what we're going to do is over here, we're just going to hit the plus button to set up a VPN service. So if I just hit the drop down here, I'm going to select VPN. And we're looking for that right there, L2TP over IPsec, okay? Because that's the type of VPN we set up in our screencast. And we can name it whatever we want. So I'm just going to say, let's say server 
VPN and say create. And so now I've created this new service with server VPN. So what I need to do is in the configuration, you can see it says default or add a configuration. Again, if I sent the configuration profile, I could just double click on it and have it work. Uh, but instead, I've got to fill all this stuff in manually. I just want to show you how to do that. So here I put the service address. Let me put that in. And then the password, uh, the account name that I need to put in there. So this would be the short name of your user account. So let me put that in there. And then we're going to hit this authentication settings. And so we've got this drop down here where we're going to put in the password and the shared secret. So let me go ahead and put that in there. And then when I have that done, we'll go from there. OK, now that I've got that information in there, I've put both my password and shared secret in. I'm just going to say OK. And so now everything's set up and configured. Now you'll notice down here I've got this show VPN and status, uh, status and menu. If I just check that, you'll notice I've got this little icon up here that will allow me to uh, connect to VPN. OK, that'll set it up. You see it says it's not configured because I need to hit apply here. And so now that it's applied all of that, if I click on this, you'll see that I've got connect to server VPN. So I can trigger that right from the menu here if I want to do that, or I can do it within system preferences. So it just makes it more convenient. So let's go ahead and hit connect here. And we're going to go ahead and go through the connecting process. You see up here it's connecting. And now you can see I'm connected. And so it's giving me that IP address of 230. And you can see it's got sent and receive information, tells me my connected time. I've got a green dot over here. And so my VPN service is all connected configured. So that gives you an idea of how to set up that VPN service on a Mac. Like I said, you can use the configuration profile and just double click on it. It'll put all this in there for you. Uh, to disconnect, I can do it from here. Or again, if I'm just using this, I can come up here and say disconnect VPN and it'll do that. And now it's back to being disconnected. OK, so that shows you how to set up VPN on Mac OS server. Again, not too much has changed from previous versions of server other than you just can't use that PT, uh, PPTP service uh, anymore. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own server, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.